Hey everyone, uh, for those of you new to my channel, my name is Rob Jarrett and I am doing a um, two week challenge associated with Phil Maffetone and, and his uh, low carb, low sugar uh, diet. And uh, before we get too far down the road, I've done several videos over the course of the last 15 days that um, kind of walk through the daily experience, but I thought it was useful. Um, bottom line up front what do you need to get out of this uh, and whether you need to watch any more of this video or not because you know why why listen to two weeks worth of uh stuff and then find out it doesn't work for you or it's not going to work for you so let me start with the things that um, i kind of went into this the challenge expecting first of all i wanted to lose a little bit of weight you know i don't know how much but um and so, but more importantly, I wanted to see if it affected my alertness level and my hunger level. Uh, for months, literally for months, I've been talking to my wife about um, feeling groggy all the time, sleepy, um, lethargic, you know, not motivated. And and the other thing is I've, I've had this compulsive hunger. It's like I'm hungry all the time. I feel like Harry Potter. I'm angry all the time, right? Well, I'm hungry all the time. And about three, four weeks ago, she gave me a book called uh, Natural Born Heroes. And it's a story of the um, rebellion in Crete or the, um, <clears throat> the resistance in Crete during World War II. And one of their actions was they took a general, a Nazi general, um, kidnapped him and... Uh, you know, it's the whole story of that. Well, how does that relate to this? Well, uh, guy, the guy who wrote it, uh, McDougal, Christopher McDougal, takes about five different stories, including the history of Crete, you know, all the way back to Odysseus and Achilles and the modern day Cretan resistance to the Nazi uh, occupation, the espionage that leads uh, to certain key players being in the right place at the right time in the in 1940s on the island of Crete, um, their lifestyle and their diets. And then it takes all that and it blends it with um, this philosophy of natural movement uh, rather than you know bulk repetitive training sets and reps in the weight room, um, strength training and, and what he calls natural uh, movement training uh, some self-defense. He talked about some self-defense stuff in there in that book, and uh, he talks about diet, and it leads into what what's most people refer to as the Maffetone diet. And then in that book, so he he takes about five or six threads and winds them together, and it's sometimes you're kind of like, what the heck does this have to do with anything? But it's an excellent book. Uh, and one of the side effects of it being a good history story was that it it actually put a, the diet into a context of first of all I listened to the whole thing uh, heard heard everything that he had to say and um, you know because it's easy to just kind of get overwhelmed by the diet books and you know whatever I've never done a diet I the way I control my weight is by monitoring it and doing you know eating less when appropriate and physical exercise, right? Well, as I get older, uh, had some minor in injuries that have slowed me down, that's been harder to do. So the question is, but I still don't like the concept of a diet because almost overwhelmingly diets fail. So I'm reading this or listening to this book on Audible and he walks through his own person, toward the end of the book, his own personal experience, um, McDougal does, of meeting Maffetone taking down just a handful of notes and then going and trying this two week um, reboot, metabolic reboot. And, you know, he describes certain things in the course of that book that jumped out at me, uh, alertness, hunger, things like that, hunger control and things like that. Um, the weight loss is, was sort of probably going to happen just because you're reducing sugars and carbs. But so that was part of it. But the thing that caught my attention was alertness and hunger management. So I went out and uh, we went to the 
websites, and we'll come back to this in a minute. And we did this 15 day trial where we're proceeding into week three right now. And I will be releasing some more detailed videos on my diet and things like that. Um, the, the, the daily blog, I, I didn't do a daily blog, but I did every couple of days to, to give feedback just so that you can get a sense of what it was like to go through the experience. Um, bottom line, I didn't even approach this with a, from a morale perspective, but if you wrap up all the other things that have come out of this two weeks, um, I think probably the biggest thing is improved morale. And the reason for that improved morale really comes down to the next three items in this list. Uh, the, there was a clear cut, unmistakable linkage of my alertness at work, uh, which is my office right here. I'm a, I'm a remote IT guy. Um, during the course of the day, the level of alertness, and maybe we should focus on the presence of lethargy and fatigue and sleepiness, uh, looking at those factors was a dramatic improvement. And it started as early as, the, as day three. We started this on a Saturday. Uh, and on Monday, my, I was alert the whole day for the first time in months. And when it comes to alertness and, and fatigue, if you will, and hunger, these are topics I've been talking to my wife about literally for months now um, that I'm just sleepy all the time. I'm tired all the time. Can't get rid of the fatigue. And I'm hungry all the time. I feel like Harry Potter. Um, you know, he's angry all the time, right? Well, I'm hungry all the time. And so, um, so as we enter the first week the first thing i'll tell you right off the bat is out of the 10 work days that i had i only was sleepy once during that period and i wasn't doing anything exceptionally different than what i normally do it's not like i was on a new project and it was exciting and not there was nothing i had some long days some 12 hour days uh, several eight hour days where i didn't have didn't even take lunch so it was constant brain activity through the day now at the end of the day i my brain is tired but even then um you know if i when i get up and go downstairs get some you know get a little snack go put some air in the tires go do a very very gentle ride i mean a ride that normally takes me 30 minutes you know we were out we're doing it at heart rate of 110 kind of thing a uh, 40 minute ride that normally takes 30 minutes right just a very gentle pace and then i come back and i'm alert again and revived for refreshed for the rest of the the evening in 15 days i took three naps one was on a weekend i had gotten up really early that day gone out and done some uh, we helped clean up the local community center so i got back took a shower it was just kind of a sleepy day perfect sleepy day i took a nap right Okay, I don't count that. Naps on the weekend, that's what the weekend's for. I took two naps uh, after hours, work hours, um, going into, uh, or in that 15-day period. Going into this, literally for weeks, months, um, I, I almost had to take a 30-minute nap at lunch every day in order to get through the day. I was I just couldn't stay alert and motivated to do anything. I mean, I did the best I could, but it was it was not good. Hunger uh, for months. It's been going on increasingly over the last year or two, really since you know COVID hit and the more sedentary lifestyle has come on, set on. Um, constant hunger, and it's a compulsive kind of hunger that you know you you're walking in, you're eating stuff even when you're not, when, even when you're full almost it's um anyway those two things were dramatically different and so if you are looking to start this re regimen and and they are what leads to the improved morale uh, mostly the third one decreased weight i kind of expected to lose some weight i didn't know whether it'd be you know five pounds would it be sustainable we'll, we'll come back to that uh in a minute but 
when you put the, the being able to a number you can see your weight along with these qualities that you can't really see alertness and you know hunger control for the first time in a very long time i feel good about my physical you know destiny I, I'm, I'm getting older things are breaking down and so in that regard there's a certain amount of you know let's face it mortality is catching up but i feel good about being able to be you know in the best overall condition that I that I can be be all you can be in the army right yeah, got the army shirt okay so that's that was sort of the things that I that the things that made me want to do this from listening to the book was the sort of the alertness and the hunger control and then side effect you know the weight would be nice since then there have been other things that I've noticed um, decreased acid reflux uh, it was getting to where I had pretty regularly had acid reflux, like every couple of days. Uh, when I'd sleep, I'd wake up and you know there's vomit in your throat. Is um, not not much, just but enough that you knew. Uh, um, and in the two in the 15 days, 16 days now, uh, zero. And I, I probably didn't haven't gone through a two week period in the last six months where I didn't have some acid reflux at night. Um, just generally speaking, GI distress is reduced. Less gas, less bloating, less, you know, blah, 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 all that nasty stuff. Um, and I feel like I'm sleeping better. That's a little bit hard to judge because you know, it's not like you're, you know, doing quality control during, during the night. But when I wake up in the morning, uh, after when my eyes come open, I'm more or less alert uh and ready to go and so with that said um let me hide my ugly mug and let's kind of take a look at some of the uh, details in this uh, that, that brought me to this result so after listening to the book and um talking to my wife for um, about a week or so we had i'd gone out and done some research on uh the, the websites, uh, the math website here, and um, you know this is the particular, this is the drill down that goes to the um, recipes that are available. So uh, eventually, I ended up on this website right here, and you know he talks about um, stuff that you can eat and stuff that you know you can't eat, that sort of stuff. I don't know if we did this perfectly. He has a yes, no uh, thing, and I don't know if we were so processed meats, canned or prepared meats, smoked products. Oops, I might have violated that upon reflection. Uh, notice that there were things here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did a couple of viol. I have a couple of violations. I did. I did milk. I thought we were allowed to do that. So okay. So I didn't even do a perfect one. Here are the yes foods. Um, I didn't even do a perfect analysis of the, the dietary requirements. You know, hard cheeses, unprocessed soft cheeses, creams, eggs, okay. That stuff all fit in. I think about, you know, the highlights there was I didn't, uh, uh, I, I did include milk, uh, which probably I wasn't supposed to do. Okay, so bottom line, I didn't do this perfectly. And despite the fact that it wasn't perfect, it still was um, had all of those effects now maybe if I, if we had done it perfectly maybe we would have had more effects better effects but uh, so one of the pages there you can drill down into are some menus and uh, we looked at the, some of them and then finally we were kind of like all right we're not gonna what, what, what we want to do is let's do this 15 days and we're just going to focus on as much lean um, not to the point of no fat, because that's not what this diet is about. So this is, uh, um, but we didn't. We're taking out the carbs and the sugars in simplistic terms. So we went out and got, you know, chicken, steak, you know, uh, pork chops, things of that nature. Um, hard nuts, not not peanuts, for example. Unfortunately, because I like peanuts. Um, 
And we, and eggs and bacon and, uh, you know, I have to confess, I actually thought milk was part of it, so we, we had milk. Okay, so for the most part, I adhered to this diet. And it is, you know, I, now that I know that I'm not allowed to drink milk, I this third week I'm not going to drink milk. <laughs> but um, that led us then into, well, what were some of the results? And hopefully this will help you decide <clears throat> whether to even waste your time on it. So even not doing it perfectly, which unfortunately I thought I did, but okay, I didn't. Um, I went back into my phone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, you uh, haven't seen any of my other videos, I was a Army aviator. I was in the National Guard, and we, uh, I was on flight status pretty much till the end of my career. And every year we'd have to do a flight physical and... Uh, army fitness test and so my my whole life even though I was um, a guardsman was pretty active and pretty uh, motivated by fit you know physical fitness I'm, I'm not I'm not one of these guys who's you know buff and goes and works out all the time but I had to be able to you know run push-ups sit-ups my health had to be good. You know, there's a difference between fitness and being healthy. You know, what, what's your blood sugar like? What's your blood pressure like, etc. Well, every year you have to do a flight physical. And so I got in the habit toward the end of my career of, for the week or two leading up to it, recording my blood sugar, my blood pressure, uh, my weight, things like that. Because if you show up on the, the day of your physical and for some reason you're, you know, um, distressed or something and your blood pressure is too high they can ground you for having too high a blood pressure and you got to go up to get to a doctor and get them to sign off on you you know and come back bring your letter back from a, a real doctor when I say a real doctor a, you know a specialist in uh, cardio or whatever it is and then your flight surgeon who is a real doctor um you know evaluates the that information in the context of your whole flight physical and gives you an upslip or a downslip okay so it became a habit to periodically usually in the fall check my vitals if you will and um, based on that I went back and I found in my phone where I had tracked my um, my um, blood pressure here okay uh, I didn't track my weight because for about 10 years, I was able to maintain my weight 195 plus or minus 3. Starting in my early 40s, I realized that I was at 198 and climbing, and I was like, that's hell no. This is not This is out of control. Uh, you know, the Army standard was, I think, 205 or something, whatever, for my age bracket. Or Anyway, I got a scale every morning. I'd weigh myself in the morning and in the evening. And... In the mornings, it was real simple. If I was over 195, I would eat less. And if I was under 195, I would eat whatever I wanted. Um, the blood pressure uh, tracking here that occurred in October, this is after my retirement for flight service here. And so this was uh, about the time I was getting ready to do a quarter distance or uh, Olympic distance triathlon. And so you can see here that um, it has... Um, about a week's worth of data and you can see that generally speaking I'm just sort of slightly below the 120 over 80 that we most we typically think of my resting heart rate was about 75 on average and the glucose was I don't I didn't uh, track it but I put the 100 here to illustrate because at 100 from an aviator's point of view at 100 well from anyone's point of view you you rent, enter the pre uh, diabetic range and as a as an aviator that was not allowed so I kind of cobbled together this uh, I took real numbers here in the purple and the red numbers here the 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 weight was was real in the sense that uh, I maintained that weight for 10 15 years but it wasn't daily this was not you know my October 1st October 2nd so I just put that average in there and then I put the benchmark that I have to maintain. And based on that, I created this reference grid. 195 is where I'd you know, kind of like to be at a minimum. I'd like to get back to there, maybe get, a, get it even lower. My uh, systolic and dist, uh, dist, diastolic um, pressure levels. 
Uh, this is just standard, okay, for lack of a better way to put it. My resting heart rate, I didn't want to see it go get any worse. And then the glucose. <clears throat> so based on this grid right here, these red, that's what all these red lines over on these charts are for. Then, um, about two weeks ago when we started this, I weighed 208.8 pounds. And at the time, I didn't think about uh, getting my blood pressure and my blood glucose. And so it took me a few days, and then one day my wife dragged out her blood pressure cuff, and I was like, you know what, I ought to do that. And so about five days into it, I started collecting that information to see what, if anything, it told me. So that's why you see uh, some of this starting here and some of this starting here. Now in this period right here, it's pretty linear, uh, and that's because I didn't weigh myself. I just extrapolated so you can get a sense of what was going on in that first five days from, from here to here. Uh, I went from 208 down to you know 201 um, in, what, six, seven days. Um, so if we take a look at this chart, these charts, so this is where I was at the start. And, you know, this weekend I picked up a little bit here. Um, and this is where, I, when I get back to this red line, that's where I want to be at a minimum. I want to get down to, uh, you know, 195. Ideally, I probably want to go down to about 185. But you, you could see that the trend was the correct trend. Um, it's going in the right direction. Now, um, I put the blood pressure here. So here's the, the top number, 120 over 80. And I put them in there as a reference. And w one of the things that I think anyone looking to do this um, two-week challenge should, should consider is getting a good glucose uh, monitor, a good scale, and a pressure cuff, and for a week or maybe even two before you start it, uh, build a, a true baseline. You know, record it every day when you're not on this diet. And the reason for that is as you change the diet, there's different amounts of salt and things like that. Um, so what, one of the things, in my case, I relied on pistachio nuts, which are typically salted and, and you know, all right. So I'm increased, potentially increasing my salt intake what we don't want to see is the blood sugar or blood pressure shoot out the roof, right? Uh, and some people are sensitive to salt intake. Most of my life, I have not been. At least, um, you know, I've I've done enough of these one week, two week long regimens to see that you know this is pretty pretty typical. I'm usually right below the 120 over 80. Now, there are specific, well, here's an example where it jumped up. And that can occur for any number of reasons, including just having a bad dream right before you wake up. If you come out of a, you know, a scary dream, um, your blood pressure will be higher. So the, all you're looking for here is trends and to make sure that you're not uh, starting to see an upward trend as a, a result of your diet change. So you can see that that was good and it's, you know, tending a slightly lower. Um, we'll see. Uh, glucose, glucose levels, uh, blood sugar. Um, you can see that uh, here, first couple days, there were two days in there I missed it, and then I picked up again. So I just carried the 95 forward. It, but from this point on here, you can see that I've been bouncing around. And you'll notice that this weekend I was a little bit um, elevated. Uh, one thing that you'll note here is that the 101, 102, they occurred on the weekend. And I my glucose reading was taken about two hours later than normal, uh, later than the others. And over the years, I have found this to be true, that um, I'll do it during the weekdays, and I take it at whatever, you know, 7.30, 7.45 in the morning. And then on the weekends, I'll sleep in, you know, 9.30, get up. And so I'm taking it at 9.45 in the morning or whatever. And... The, you know, the, what happens is the liver kicks and says, hey, he's not going to feed me. It's time for breakfast, right? And, it, and it, the liver kicks in. And you will very consistently see uh, higher blood sugar when you go beyond the 12-hour uh, mark um, since you last ate. So this is, um, this doesn't really scare me. What'll, you know, if I was to stay above 100 all week long, then 
this coming week, then I might start to be like, what's going on? But, um, you know, every once in a while, you know, he pops up there for some reason or another, but you can see here pretty good 95, 85, 95, 90, 89 kind of numbers. And then the, the resting heart rate, um, you know, again, it's just sort of a general uh, trend that I'm below the 75 that I had been at this spot right here. Um, yeah, I think these numbers were probably a little more accurate, the 75 numbers, because I used my uh, Garmin watch, which records you throughout the night and it finds your, you know, it calculates your resting heart rate. This was done using the pressure cuff in the morning, so it gives you your reading and your current uh, resting heart rate. Um, so these might be a little bit optimistic. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but they're from the consistent source. These came from my watch, and you'll notice they're in the 70s, mid 70s. Um, and these resting heart rates, which includes several down in the 60s, came from my blood pressure cuff. So some minor differences, and it, this isn't intended to be super scientific, but I thought we it would be helpful to put together some slides for you. Uh, or some charts here that show some actual uh, ways that you can monitor your performance uh, before before and during your uh, two-week attempt. So coming back to the results, um, as I mentioned before, without a doubt, the the thing that caught my attention first was the alert, the alertness. Uh, second was by about day three or four I, I noticed my hunger was starting to uh, abate a little it wasn't as raging out of control uh, coincidentally my weight was starting to come down and then later it wasn't until later or you know where you have time to sort of get a sense of things that you start to notice other improvements uh, and all those kind of roll up into that improved morale. You know, for the first time, I actually have a tool. It's like, I am not going to count calories. It's it's just too, you know, anything that where you got to take three days off to eat or you can't eat anything you want, you know, or when I say anything, that you can't ever have carbohydrates or ever have sugar or sweets or anything like that. It's not going to work. It's just not, not for me. It's not going to work. And so... This uh, diet, we've gone through two weeks of it, and we didn't put in any time to make the menus particularly special. I'll, I'll have another video <clears throat> where we talk about the, the diet, what I did, and um, nothing about this diet was unsustainable. Right, if I had to eat the exact same stuff I've eaten for the last two weeks forever and nothing else, then it would become unsustainable. You'd get tired of it. Uh, and you would go out and get a pizza or whatever. Um, so uh, the one thing that I will say that we're going to do now is take a mod modify the two-week regimen, which is pretty much no carbs, no sugar. And we're going to go with a five and two. So from Friday evening until Sunday lunch is basically just eat whatever you want and the reason for that is because that's when we do our family things that's when we're out and about and you know last weekend I was doing a uh, community center volunteer we were painting and stuff like that we build a fence and things like that with my uh, the company that I work at and they provided lunch and I forgot to bring my lunch and guess what it was Chick-fil-A and I'm like okay I love Chick-fil-A but Chick-fil-A has potato chips, has a bun, has a batter on their chicken, and it has a cookie. Okay, so I scraped, I took the bun off, I, I didn't eat the potato chips, I scraped off as much of the batter as I could, and I still have that cookie downstairs, which I'm getting ready to go eat. Um, you know, carbs and sugar, right? It's almost all carbs and sugar. And so when you're out and about, on the weekends mostly there's just no time to pick and choose sometimes and it's just gonna be hard so what we're gonna do 
now that we've done the two weeks and we've seen these benefits I will put some additional videos to show you know the sort of what the daily experience was like how I was feeling at the time um, and the menus that I used and stuff like that um, and this week I'm going to be going into this five and two so Sunday evening we're gonna pick up again with a you know lean not lean that's not the right word the math diet, the the non the low carb, low sugar diet, through basically through the breakfast on Friday, uh, lunch on Friday. I, I'm not eating lunch for the most part because I'm eating a breakfast that's sufficiently satisfactory to get me to dinner the way I'm doing it now. So from Sunday evening till Mon uh, Friday afternoon, if you will, we're going to. Uh, maintain this diet more or less and then uh, it's not like we're gonna go out and blow uh, blow up and eat every sweet thing in, on the planet but on the weekends just kind of eat whatever is appropriate um, we're, we're obviously now f focusing a little more on what we eat so even on the weekends maybe you get a salad instead of a potato baked potato f w with that steak or something like that right so that you can have your fajitas the next day, <laughs> whatever it is that you want. Um, so we're going to, the next two weeks, we're going to do a five and two approach during the weeks when it's a little easier to control our, our eating habits. We're going to maintain the, the uh, low carb, low sugar uh, approach on the weekends, a quote normal diet. Um, which will undoubtedly be skewed in favor of the low carb, low sugar when, when applicable. And uh, what I'm looking for is we saw, you know, at the lowest point on my weight chart, I lost 10 pounds in the 15 days. Um, now, some people can lose a lot more than that in, in 15 days, but I haven't lost 10 pounds. I haven't lost five pounds in 10 days, 15 days ever in my life, ever. And, and that's even when I'm training for, you know, Ironman. I, <laughs> you know, I never did that when I trained for Ironman. I never lost five pounds in a week. Um, so partly because I was, at the time, I was in a, you know, carb mentality. That was, that's the uh, approach that a lot of people take is carbo loading and all that sort of stuff. So I didn't, I never lost that kind of weight. Uh, one other time I've lost this amount of weight, but it took m two months, three months to do it. And I lost about 15 pounds over a two to three month period when I was deployed to Afghanistan. So it's like, okay, my physical op tempo was up. My diet was, you know, tolerable, I guess, and I lost weight. But, he, you know, here at home, never lost 10 pounds before like this. So is it great? I don't know. For me, it is. Maybe not for you, but for me, a 10-pound loss in 15 days was, was really good. I, would I have liked to have lost? Would I, would I like to have gotten back down to 195 in that 15 days? Sure. Could I have? Yeah, probably if I tried, but without really trying, I, I lost 10 pounds. And so now what we want to kind of look at is in this 5 and 2 phase is we're going to do two weeks of that is to see if, okay, if I eat whatever I want, so to speak, on the weekend, you know, it's reasonable to think that I might pick up a pound or two. Um, first of all, we want to see how much I pick up, if any. And then the question is, over the next five days, can I, you know, bring that back under control and maybe lose three pounds? And if I could gain two, lose, lose three, gain two, lose three, um, and enjoy, you know, my dietary life, so to speak, um, that would be totally cool with me as far as that's that's sustainable right I, I, I should be able to do that um, where I can have a pizza where I can have fajitas where I can have a burrito whatever and, you know rice and things like that um, so that's the phase we're entering now um, we're gonna see instead of losing 0.8 pounds a day maybe I lose you know one one or two pounds a week uh, three pounds a week as and then we'll see how the weekend affects it do I 
hold my own? You know, is, is two days enough where I can kind of hold my own or do I gain weight? So that's kind of the phase that we're going to be entering. And uh, I'll be keeping track of this stuff. And, you know, as we go along, at some point, I'll put another two week update out with this five and two approach. And then we'll look at it. And as long as the trend is in the right direction, uh, we'll keep doing the five and two. If the if we start to pick weight up again, then we'll probably you know tweak it down to you know five and a half and one and a half and see you know see what uh, what we can do to keep it um, you know flat or decreasing until we get to a target weight. And sort of off the record, uh, 185 is my goal. Uh, 195 is really you know I was there for a long time. If I can get to 195 and be there I would be okay with that um, if I could get down to 185 that would be you know great um, I don't think anything below that's overly realistic maybe who knows we'll see but if you're if you can do this over a very long period of time because it's sustainable then who knows maybe we could even get down to 175 I think that would be the true optimum weight if I'm also physically fit so We've been riding, running, walking. Um, when I get down to 195, I'm actually going to start lifting weights again because you, you know muscle is a little heavier, so I want to get myself a little buffer. And I actually pick up a couple of pounds uh, typically of, of muscle weight. Uh, so once I get to 195, I'm going to hit the the weight room a little bit, and we'll see how things go. But um, hope this is uh, useful. And, you know, uh, like I said, I wanted to do the bottom line up front so that you could decide whether you want to watch any of the subsequent videos that come out. I mean, why waste your time if it sucks uh, or if it's, if it's, if it's not going to give you the things that you think you need? So um, best wishes. Go out and get yourself a, you know, a pressure cuff, a, a glucose a meter, and a good scale. Uh, and... What's a good scale? When you step on the scale and it tells you 201.4 and you step off and you let it reset and you step on it and it says 203.4, that's not a good scale in my mind. The, I had one of those to start and that's why the weights were kind of eh. And I went out and I bought a really good scale, well, really expensive scale. Um, and when I step on and it says uh, 201.4 and I step off, I step back on it again to a 1.4. I get the same number when I do a double tap. And I do that in the morning and I do that in the evenings. So get yourself a good scale. Um, this, and preferably one that kind of tracks your trend so you can, you know, see how that goes. Um, but m most importantly is when you do two weight, you know, when you do a double tap, it ought to tell you the same number. If it didn't, that, that scale is no good. Um, a mechanical scale is better is better than that. So... Uh, take a look at, at that. Get yourself ready. You know, track your numbers for a week or two, and then um, you know, hopefully, I'll have some videos up here with the, some of the diet information or the the recipe information, or maybe you can find a good uh, site like the Math site there, and um, you can give this a, a, a try yourself. So, good luck, and thanks for uh, thanks for watching the video.